Hey everyone, what is going on? It is Brad Jijun here, and welcome back to my creative series, which still has its name kind of in progress here. I used to call it Creative Creations, but a lot of you guys said that was a little bit weird, so I've gone back uh, and looked through the comments, and a few of you guys suggested re-engineering, which is kind of a play on the words RE, which is reply, and since this series is about me getting ideas from you guys and putting into the space that it is in a playable format, uh, that's kind of like, it's, it's my reply to your guys' requests. So, I'm back here on my Gravity Track, uh, race, or my Gravity Race, or my Wipeout series, which I, I called Wipeout in the previous video, but I had a few complaints from a few people saying that it wasn't exactly Wipeout, it was too different from Wipeout, and it shouldn't be named Wipeout. So, I've renamed it to Grav Track, and this is Grav Track version 2, which includes a few modifications to a few existing things that I had, uh, in the previous video, as well as a few new features, and I'll quickly fly through them right now. So first things first, we have updates to the ramp. Now previously, or in the previous video, uh, because I couldn't copy and paste rotors at that time, I had to replace the rotary gravity gen underneath the ramp to a stationary, uh, just a series of gravity generators pointing upwards to get you to go up the ramp. Now that you can copy and paste rotors, I've now replaced it with a rotary gravity gen like you see there and you can also see it on the other side over here as well so now that you can copy and paste of I've also I've just kind of reverted back to using the rotary gravity gens because it's a little bit easier a little bit cleaner and it works a little bit better as well the next thing I've added is probably my favorite thing so far and that is a power-up system which basically it'll drop components such as ammunition uranium uh, missiles and your ships will then fly through you have a chance to pick up the random amounts of ammo and then you can use that in your fight against the other races so I thought that's kind of cool as well the next thing we have is a whole bunch of traps so we had this rotating door trap which I think is really cool and then we have an axe trap which kind of swings around has a few grinders on it can repair itself as well and it is quite devastating if it just clips you at the wrong angle then we have a gravity disruption round or gravity disruption section here that when your ship flies through it has a chance to be sent off course slightly, uh, making it a little bit harder to drive around. So, without further ado, let me show you guys how some of these actually work. Little guy, you want to get inside your ship, please? Yeah, maybe, you want to get inside? Like, that one? Yes, thank you, please. I think he's going to get inside. I'm not too sure how he, how he feels about all this stuff lately. No, he doesn't want to get inside? Let me go first, person. <laughs> let me get inside the ship here, and let me fly it around and show you guys how some of these actually work. So, first things first, is the gravity disruption round. Now, you'll notice it rotating around slowly, and depending on what angle this is, when I hit it, it will send me off course ever so slightly, which I think is pretty, uh, pretty cool. A kind of, a, a, a more of an annoyance than it is a trap, but if you do go speeding past it without paying attention, there is a chance that you have, uh, to be sent off course, or to actually destroy your ship. So, it is a trap in that sense. And you may have noticed, I've also modified my original ship here, as well. It now has landing gear on the side, the Gatlin gun is now on top instead of at the front here, simply because I don't want to risk destroying it. It also has a nice paint coat and it has some landing gears at the back here as well as two extra thrusters to give it more acceleration. But enough of that being said, let's go towards the next trap which is the axe that my friend nicknamed. So basically this thing swings around at whatever speed you want it to set to and the grinders will, if, if, not, if they don't hit you, they will grind away some of your components ever so slowly depending on what your actual welding speed is modified to set to. If it's set to default, it will grind very, very slowly. So if I go to the side here, you'll notice it will start grinding me. It won't grind me very fast. Let me pull out my welder here so you guys can see what speed this is actually going at. And you'll notice that my components are down to 99%, which, very, which isn't much at all. So it does go through very, very slowly. Also with this being heavy armor, it will take a while. But obviously with that said, if you are the host of this world, if you're the host of the race, you can modify your welding speeds to be a higher number, which means that these will then grind through your ships at a faster rate as well. But if this does happen to hit you at a bad angle, you do risk losing a lot of your ship, such as that, which I think is absolutely kind of cool. So you can be out of the fight from one mistake with this axe thing here, which I think is kind of cool. So let me make a copy of my ship here, which I kind of have, but it's at a really weird angle. Oh no, that's a broken one. Whoopsies. Uh, I can't use that one. I'll use the other ships over there instead. So the next trap obviously is kind of, it's kind of easy and kind of hard. It really depends on what speed you have it set to and the thing's still grinding away. 
the interesting thing about this is that even if you do hit it at full speed and you do damage it ever so slightly, it will repair itself using these welders at the top here. So it can basically fix itself in one rotation. And I'll show you guys that actually by me grabbing out a ship here. So let me quickly fly through here. It isn't that hard to get through. It just involves a lot of timing and a lot of speed as well. So actually, since the ship's right here, we'll just go through this one right now. So if I can make it through, I don't think I will, but I will show you guys how much damage it does. And there we go. So my ship is completely damaged, wrecked, it's flying away. And this thing has taken absolutely no damage at all, which is basically how it's meant to work. Now, like I said before, you guys can set the speeds to whatever you want. I just have it set really, really fast right now, just for the sake of this test. So I can show you guys myself getting through it, though it, that would make for an entertaining video. So I'd rather show you guys me try to wreck it and just you guys can see it slowly repairing itself over and over again. It is possible, however, even at the maximum speed, you can get through it with a ship of this size that I have right here because I have done it before. So anyways, we'll be moving on to the next thing, which is the power-ups. Now, this is kind of an interesting concept that I was working on right from before I even released the first video of this gravity track idea. Uh, but I never really got around to doing it because I wasn't too sure how it would actually function. Because this would involve you guys to be in survival mode in order for the ammo count to actually work. So basically, what this has here is this has a gravity field pushing down, but no gravity field in the middle here, as opposed to the other track parts that have a gravity field all across the whole thing. This is done simply by having a gravity generator on either side here that limits its radius to just about where these uh, collectors start. Now, once the ammo falls into the collector, it will then be recycled and spread out at the top using this connector here. And these will then drop out randomized amounts of whatever you've put in. So right now it has in a little bit of uh, machine gun ammo, a few missiles, and some uranium. And you guys can see here, it'll cycle through a few of these and just drop it out at random amounts at random intervals as well. So let me show you actually collecting some of them. I'll fly this ship in right now. Actually this one already has some ammo in it because I already did a few runs with this. This is my second take as well, so figure me. So this one, as you guys can see down the bottom, has zero ammunition in its gun, even though I can still fire it because I'm in creative. But anyways, I'll fly through here and see if I can actually collect some ammo. Now, obviously, the faster you fly, there's a there's a chance you won't actually get anything. And the, it also really depends on how you've lined up. So I've collected a few things here. A few things have bounced off. A few things have fallen back into the generator. But what have I actually collected in that few seconds I was there? So I think I may have collected... I've got some Gatlin ammo, I've got a few uh, missiles here as well, so if I, if I did have missiles, uh, that, that would be handy, but I don't. But you can basically set this to whatever you want, or however rarity you want for these items, and however, however the maximum amount is that you want them to have. So over in here, I have 480 uh, normal ammo and 200 of missiles. Now if I wanted to, I could only put in 10 missiles, which would mean that that would be a lot less frequent than the 480 of the normal ammo that I put in there, and that really is up to you guys. You can also use uranium, like I said before, that, and that's really up to you if you want to sort of a survival type of race where uh, you, your uranium is actually uh, means something, where it's actually worth something. So you can either make it so that your ships will have to stop into a pit after a few laps there, because if you start off with say, say, say you may a, a ship will start off with. Uh, say one uranium ingot inside of it. Now the race might only last a few laps with that one uranium ingot, meaning that they have to stop into a pit stop. But if they go by this and they're lucky enough to get the uranium ingot, they're enabled to go a, f a few more laps without having to stop like everyone else. So that could be used as a power up in that sort of sense there. Uh, but like I said, ammo can obviously be used to restore your guns to kind of give you that sort of edge over your targets for a few seconds until your ammunition actually runs out. The next thing is the ramps here, and like I said before, I've improved them using the uh, rotors instead, and as you guys can see, it's, it's kind of a, a lot smoother of a ride here. And we also have these smaller ramps up here, which is more of an annoyance than anything, and obviously having to go over them, or even just slowing down to go over them. They're not that big of a deal, but they're still, they're, they're still there for the sake of being there. I was thinking of making smaller ramps as well, but I just thought we'll go with the large ones and the small ones. If you guys wanted other ramps, you guys could feel free to uh, make them yourselves as well. And like I said, this will be the last video I'll do on this gravity track idea. I just thought it was interesting to show you guys these few other features that I've added. I'll be uploading it under the name of Grav Track uh, version 2 because this will contain all the updated features. I've also made it so that the world 
minus, uh, sorry, me, uh, sorry, other ship. I've also made it so the world is a little bit cleaner as well. I'll be getting rid of this before uploading it. So basically all you have is just the components. There's no other tracks around anywhere to slow down the game at all. I'll leave in a few of the ships that I've made, just so you guys can use them if you guys want. But basically I've made it so that this, this world will try to run as fast as it can. So obviously when you're in the middle or if you're looking at everything, my frame rate can drop down to about 50. And that's the lowest I've seen it go uh, with this current setup right now. So I've tried to make it as, as fast and as optimized as I can for you guys uh, without having a much of the crap. And this thing's still grinding away. I can still hear it. I might remove the sound because it's actually kind of annoying to listen to throughout this whole video. So I'll get rid of it for you guys. But you guys can see that it, whilst it's grinding away, it's grinding away very, very slowly. Hence why I recommend modifying the actual uh, welding speed so you can have a bit more of an intense race. And if you guys don't know how to do that, there is a link down in the description for a uh, modifier. So anyways, well, let me know what you guys think about these traps and the uh, power-up system. And if you guys would use them, and also if you have any tracks uh, made using this system, feel free to link them to me. I'll link them in the description for other people to try out themselves. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what I should be making next in the creative series, because one person suggested chess, and I might be doing that if no one else has suggested anything else to do. So, thank you guys for watching. This has been Brad Fusion with Reengineering, where you guys give me your ideas and I create them for you. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Stay awesome, everyone.